In this week's Blizz Pro Weekly, the Warcraft movie gets a teaser trailer at San Diego Comic-Con, StarCraft II celebrates its third birthday, Diablo items get auctioned off by Sony, Hearthstone is finally showing off the Forge, and JR makes a bold prediction on when we'll see the beta. Hint, it's sooner than you might think. Hey everybody, welcome to the newest episode of Blizz Pro Weekly. As always, I'm your host with the fantastic beard, Chris Arnone. Been all over the Kansas City Fringe Festival this week. So has Paul, our awesome cameraman. So many awesome shows. We've been uh, kind of blinded in it. But fortunately, JR has had his wits about him and has pulled together some great Blizzard information for you this week. First off, let's talk World of Warcraft. Here's the beef. So for those that attended San Diego Comic-Con panel for Legendary Pictures, they received a little special unexpected treat. The Warcraft movie got a small teaser and then Duncan Jones came on stage to talk a little bit about it. However, something that rarely happens in this day happened there, all right? You know, nowadays we all have smartphones, everybody pretty much has a video camera in their pocket that connects to the internet, and yet this teaser is nowhere to be found on the web. And Legendary Pictures says they have no plans of releasing it ever. All right, now it seems what they did is they had a panel that faked some technical issues, then after a minute or two, out of nowhere, the teaser started playing. Most people didn't even know what it was until the screen faded to black and the Warcraft movie title could be seen. By that time, <laughs> it was too late for people to you know, record it or talk about it. It was, it was there, it was gone, boom, done. Uh, so we have nothing to show you, but we can talk about it. Some people on the internet have indeed talked about what they saw. So it starts with the human drinking uh, from a leather water pouch. He hears something in the distance, drops the pouch, and picks up a shield from a nearby skeleton on the ground, and starts banging his sword against the shield. You then see a green arm, which later zooms out, and you see it's an orc. The orc swings his axe, the human blocks with his sword, and then it cuts to the title. Duncan Jones came on stage to tea after the tease and said this is just a sort of a mood piece and isn't actual footage from the movie, but he said they do plan to start filming early 2014. Pretty cool stuff. Like, yes, it's definitely happening. At least, so say the people who went to San Diego Comic-Con, right? Uh, <clears throat> let's talk about a little interview about Patch 5.4. So Greg Ghostcrawler Street and Marco Kegler were recently in Korea talking about World of Warcraft Patch 5.4 to some fan sites there. Now, our good friends over at Players Cut recently uploaded an hour-ish long video of the interview where it's translated in both Korean and English. Now, some cool information definitely uncovered during that video. We already knew patch 5.4 was going to be the last raid tier patch. However, it sounds like we won't have a new war chief after the patch is over. Grosh's days are certainly, you know, short, uh, but this means we won't see the end of his story and who replaces Garrosh, you know, at least not here. This could mean maybe there will be another sort of non-raid tier patch with 5.5, shortly after the next expansion comes out, where we discover that particular end of that story. But right now, we just don't have any more information. It does pretty much point, though, that the next WoW expansion will probably be revealed at BlizzCon, possibly with a release date for March 2014. Another nifty piece of information was Ghostcrawler stating that they have been looking at WoW more long-term now than ever, discussing how the next expansion is going to look, and the one after that, and the one after that. So we're talking at least three new expansions that Blizzard has planned for World of, World of Warcraft, and it would seem silly to believe that, you know, they're going to stop there. It's, it's just, it's, it's funny, because hopefully this will stop the naysayers who keep claiming that WoW only has one or two expansions left to go before Blizzard just shuts the game down. It is still the most popular MMO on the planet. It's not going away anytime soon. I mean, Ever uh, EverQuest is still turning out patches and expansions for their game, and they only have about 36,000 players left. WoW is going to stick around for quite a while at this point. Let's talk StarCraft II. You want a piece of me, boy? So Blizzard has announced their WCS Regional Finals, and there's a bit of controversy behind it. Now, the first thing is, all the Korean, European, and American Finals are going to land on the exact same weekend, August 10th and 11th. Now this goes against what Blizzard's philosophy has been with WCS. They want storylines that make you know more sense and, and not have this tournament scene be too confusing. By running three major events in three regions all on the same day, there's just no way an average fan is going to be able to keep up with all of it. And they're going to end up cannibalizing the number of people watching the tournaments. 
hurting their overall numbers in the process. Now, the next problem is they've scheduled this on the same weekend as one of the biggest esports tournaments in the world, the International 3, which is having a massive Dota 2 tournament with arguably one of the biggest prize pools ever, exceeding $2.6 million. Now, Blizzard has defended their actions, all right? They've stated that they really had no way around it. They needed to do this in order to run Season 2 finals in August, and it, it just created a tight schedule. In particular, Blizzard's senior esports manager, Kim Phan, had the following to say. I'm going to quote directly from what he said on Reddit. Unfortunately, this has resulted in overlaps with other major esports events. These conflicts were certainly not intentional. The simple fact is that... As esports has grown with more events, more games, and more viewers, it's nearly impossible to avoid all conflicts. Many major weekend events already host multiple games, which are running simultaneous streams in conflict with each other. Either way, for any esports fan, mark the weekend of August 10th and 11th as probably the most exhausting weekend of your esports viewing lives to date. All right, there's going to be esports for almost like 48 hours straight. It's going to be crazy. Now, StarCraft 2 is celebrating its third birthday on July 27th. In celebration, Blizzard is currently having a 25% bonus XP for all multiplayer versus AI and training mode games. Now, for those who haven't picked up a copy of the game yet, they are unlocking all three races in the starter editions of the game. Combine that with a new spawning feature and you'll get to enjoy a full week in the Heart of the Swarm StarCraft II with your friends. We also want to point out that Wings of Liberty is currently on sale on Amazon for half off, while Heart of the Swarm is 25% off. Enough StarCraft, how about some Diablo 3? Stay a while and listen. So at E3 2013, just recently, Sony revealed their Greatness Awaits trailer, which featured various heroes, villains, beloved personalities from a variety of PlayStation games, including The Witch Doctor and Diablo. Now, PlayStation users had the opportunity to take home three unique Diablo-inspired props seen in the trailer. Those three items, the Witch Doctor Mojo, the Witch Doctor Cursed Skull, and the Witch Doctor Guard. Now, the Skull and Mojo have already been won in the auctions, but you still have a chance to win that Witch Doctor Garb, and its auction is going to begin August 1st at 1 p.m. Pacific. Now, the way this works is not like money or anything. What you do is all those gold trophies that you've earned playing PlayStation games, you essentially sort of bid those. Now, granted, you're not actually getting rid of them. You just can't use them for more than one auction. So uh, that, that's what you do. So if you've been playing a lot of PlayStation 3 games, a lot of PS Vita games, and you've earned a lot of gold trophies, you can bid. Now, of course, this is definitely not something for everyone. In fact, most people who watch this are going to be big-time PC gamers, uh, they might be completely in the dark. But if you're a big PSN junkie and you love Diablo games, this might be something you want to check out. A pretty cool piece of Diablo history. Now, personally, I have about 90 gold trophies. Uh, I was just checking, uh, but considering the previous two Witch Doctor items each went for over 1,100 gold trophies, holy shit, people have a lot of free time. Yeah, I don't think I stand a chance. Uh, wow. All right, let's talk Hearthstone. <laughs> Pull up a chair by the heart. So tomorrow, which is Friday, which by the time you see this will probably probably already have happened. So sorry, I'm telling you something that happened in the past. Blizzard is finally showing off the new and reworked Forge in a live stream scheduled to take place 10 a.m. Pacific time. Now there's a lot of anticipation surrounding the Hearthstone Forge. It's one aspect of the upcoming card game that we've yet to see a whole lot about. And we discussed this in last week's episode, that if the Forge is good to go, we might see the beta access really soon. Now, it's also been explained that during this live stream, viewers will have a chance to get an in-depth look at de deck building, uh, complete with tips, suggestions from the staff. The devs are going to be uh, going over the changes that have been made since the first announcement of the Forge. Promises to be a really cool and informative session if you're looking to hit the ground running once this game is made available. Now, if you haven't opted in for the Hearthstone beta, there's still time. Hop on over to Blizzard, get into your account management page, and opt in from there. Now, with some luck, the card game will be available shortly, and, you know, we'll all be testing our metal against each other. Now, JR's prediction, bold prediction here, is that the beta will be available Wednesday, July 31st, which is just a few days away. Now, hopefully next week's video will be showing how awesome JR is at playing TCGs and how bad Chris... Okay, what it says right there is JR is a dick. Uh, yeah, let's let's go with that. I'm going to kick his ass at this game, by the way, just so you know. We're getting in the beta. 
We're gonna make it happen. Maybe we'll do some live streams so y'all can watch me kick his ass in this game in real time. Yeah, try to sneak that into the teleprompter. What? What's he talking about? What a fool! I gotta you know, put his horse mask back on and slap him up a few times again. Anyway. That does it for our show. Thank you for watching. Of course, I'm all over the internet. Goods, Goodreads author, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. Uh, please, please subscribe and listen to our official podcast, Twizcast. It's pretty cool. And, of course, go to blizzpro.com. All the news, reviews, articles, everything you need to know about Blizzard Entertainment games. We'll see you guys next time.